Here we're going to talk about the root motion between two triads. So the root motion is the interval between two chords roots. And when we talk about root motion, we're only going to talk about seconds, thirds, and fifths. And then we're going to call them ascending or descending, depending on how those second, thirds, and fifths relate. So this lets us make equivalencies between inversionally related intervals. So sixths, ascending sixths and descending thirds are going to be considered the same thing. So this is why we only talk about thirds and not sixths, because uh, the third encompasses the sixth, because they are um, they're inversionally related. Um, but then we're going to differentiate between rising thirds and falling thirds by um, with this ascending and descending business. So let me, let me show you how this works. So if we talk about one going up to six or one going down to six, this is going to mean the same thing. So um, one moving to six is a descending third. One up to six would be an ascending six. But we're going to talk about these both as thirds. Now, similarly, one up to three is a ascending third, but one down to three would be a descending sixth, but we're going to talk about these both as thirds. So how do we distinguish between these two, these two thirds? Um, and one is going to be ascending and the other is descending. And, and how do we know? How do we know whether one is, which one is ascending and which one is descending? We have to find the actual literal second, third, or fifth relationship between two roots, and then determine whether you're ascending or descending in the scale. So 1 to 3 is an ascending third. Since you're going up the scale, you're going 1, 2, 3, you're ascending, you're going up. And so the um, relationship between 1 going to 3, the root is a ascending third. The root from 1 to 3 is ascending. Now 1 to 6, on the other hand, is a descending third. So you have to go backwards in the scale, 1, 7, 6. You're going down in the scale, it's a descending third. And letters are going to work the same way. So C to G is an ascending fifth, not a descending fourth. Because remember, we're just talking about fifths. We're not talking about fourths. So even though C down to G would be a descending fourth, we talk about the root relationship, the root motion between C and G as an ascending fifth. And then C to F, we could imagine it as an ascending fourth, but no, we're restricting ourselves when we talk about root motion to seconds, thirds, and fifths, and so we have to talk about C to F as a descending fifth. It's going backwards in the scale, and in order to talk about it, we have to use fifth. So it's a descending fifth. And now, the, the question that, you're, that you might be asking is why fifths and not fourths? After all, we chose thirds because they're smaller than six, and seconds because they're smaller than sevenths. These thirds and six are inversionally related, seconds and sevenths are inversionally related, and we always chose the smaller one. But, I, and I'll admit that this is just basically by convention. We use fifths instead of fourths. It's due to a variety of historical justifications about the consonants of fifths versus the dissonance of fourths, and then it's foundational usage in chords. When we talk about triads, we talk about the fifth that outlines those two thirds. We don't talk about the fourth as much.